And hello again everyone, and welcome back to Siberia. If you last remember, Kate's train had broken down in the station for the University of Ferrachstadt, and she had to raise some money to get a barge to tow the train out of the station into the winding station, or the winding machine. And to do that, she had to get some grapes and a bottle of wine so she could steal an egg and use it to repair a bandstand by turning it on. And yeah, it didn't make a whole lot of sense then either. Anyway, Kate has managed to get the train out of the station, but now she needs to go to a hear a lecture given by Professor Pons on the um, you call people, because this is apparently who Hans Wahlberg was trying to get to see when he left for Siberia. So we're going to go listen to that lecture now, and we kind of have to do that because we want our mammoth doll back. The train won't leave without it. Now, I'll give you a bit of a warning here. This is a very long cutscene coming up. Now, I'm always, when I'm doing these things, I sometimes will skip cutscenes, sometimes I won't. Um, but since so much of these, the Siberia games, are the world building and all that has gone into them, is why I haven't skipped a lot of conversations. Um, so I'm going to run the whole thing. I'm going to warn you, it is over five minutes of lecture, so if you don't want to hear it, you can just skip forward. In the meantime, let's go learn about the Yukal people. Alright, here we are in the lecture hall. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. All right. I think this one person over there is falling asleep. This guy's got, what, two people watching his lecture? Oh, five. And one of them looks like they're taking a nap. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. L lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukols date back to the last ice age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. 
They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yuko existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes, as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukol Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukos tender care. The island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them.
yeah, like I said, that was a pretty long cutscene. And the handful of people who were here with them are just wandering off now. Alright. And this one guy is still over there asleep. Look, <laughs> right here. Uh, maybe he'll wake up. But yeah, that was what? A 10 minute cutscene? Or 10 minute lecture? Wow. But we did learn a lot about the Yukals and where they live and that sort of thing, and the mysterious city of. mysterious land of Siberia. Where hopefully we can find Hans Wahlberg. Let's go get our mammoth ball back. Professor, it's me. I have come to pick up the mammoth doll. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. Please take good care of it. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? With pleasure, Kate. I'm all ears. And actually, we have nothing else to talk to him about, so... I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Okay, here's the mammoth doll, so we're going to pick it up. And we have some lecture notes over here. Now, these lecture notes are not exactly what he has talked about. Um, it goes into a little more detail than what he told us. Um, what these notes will tell us is that after the Yukals went to Siberia, he's got a coffee stain. In. After the Yukals went to Siberia, um, they um, thought all the mammoths had gone away. But one day, a ark made of um, ice and basically a boat made of ice and mammoth tusk sailed in that only had the bodies of mammoths on it. And they took the mammoths off of it and then later the ark sailed away on its own and every 50 years this thing has come back with full of mammoths and that's how they've been able to continue or the bodies of mammoths and that's how they've been able to continue their culture and lifestyle even with um, the mammoths being extinct and all that sort of thing. But some time ago, the Ark came, and it was empty. And the Ark has come and gone since then, but there have been no mammoths on it. They think this is going to be the end of their culture. But And now we have to go all the way back to where the train is. I like how they had to make two versions of this, one with the train and one without. Okay, that's all done and taken care of. Come on, Gabe. You can get the pig. There we go. All right. Who did that barge go? That thing is... I mean, the, the canal ends right there. Unless that raises somehow. <sighs> Whatever. I guess we need to wind the train up. Well, actually, before we go wind the train up, let's take care of a little bit of housekeeping here.
Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. I don't know why we had to have that conversation, but it was automatic. What we're going to do is we're going to go back here, and we're going to first put the mammoth doll back on its little pedestal. And then we're going to listen to this voice cylinder that we picked up. Our father is dead. He passed away peacefully last Sunday in his sleep. I feel so lonely now. Father had been but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard. And this terrible war is destroying everything. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much. Anna. So, yes, we have a recording from 1942, which the game is pretty much set around 2002. So, a 60-year-old recording. Yeah, the trail for Hans Warburg is pretty cold at this point. Okay. Time to go wind up the train. Same as set up as before. You need to go over here. Come on. And has this thing just been sitting here for 60 years waiting for the train to show up? Did Hans know that 60 years in the future he would they would make a clockwork train to come here and so had this thing built that far in advance? Um how did it get to be here? I mean, again, are clockwork trains common in this world? I don't know. Oh look, another phone call. Hello? Where are you? Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on the subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you've calmed down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Yeah. 
That's her fiance, Dan. Um, let's start taking bets on whether this marriage is actually going to come off. What do you think? Uh, Dan's a bit of a jerk, isn't he? But it's good to see that Kate is sticking up for herself. So um, maybe this adventuring life is good for her, considering how she was so how different she's treating him today than she was before. But anyway, we're about at the end, at a breaking point here. Um, I realize this is a shorter episode than I do a lot of times, and but in half of it was a cutscene with a lecture. But let's see if we can get this show on the road and see where we go from here. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay... All right. But as I was saying, we're going to continue on here for a little bit. And I will probably just pick up from this point next time. So until then, this is Dennis, this is Tan South of the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.